Danny Bubby. I'm Danny Bubby. This is my home kitchen, and I welcome you every day at 3 p.m. So for those of you who are coming in, or even if you're watching this uh, after it's been recorded, we're happy to have you here. So today, so today at exactly three o'clock, Biggie is barking. He always makes an appearance every single day. So hello there, Biggie. <laughs> Sorry about that. Usually he waits till about 3:20. Hey Frank, are you back on the road again? I'm hoping so. Hoping to hear you're back on the road. Hey Teresa, glad to have you here. We're gonna announce how to win the big contest in just a minute, so hang in there until a few other people come. Um, but let me tell you what I'm doing today. So I'm making a fennel puree. And the fennel purees are really great for things like a crispy chicken dish, perhaps a, um, a crispy uh, salmon, or even a grilled swordfish. Today I'm making my salmon puree for opa, Hawaiian opa, which is kind of like a um, swordfish, kind of a mix between a tuna and a swordfish. It's a pink flesh fish, but it has the consistency of um, like a swordfish. So not like a salmon, but more like a swordfish. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're going to be making this fennel puree and a crispy caper salad. So I'll show you how that rolls in just a few minutes. But as everyone is finding us, let me announce the big contest for Friday. So Chef Katie Chin from uh, California, who is going to be appearing on Kelly and Ryan. She is flying to New York City to appear on Kelly and Ryan for Lunar New Year. And I am going to be doing a Lunar New Year dish next Thursday in a week on KLAS in honor of the Lunar New Year. But my Asian cooking leaves a little bit to be desired and a lot to be desired via my experience. And so as a result of that, Katie is coming in on coming on Friday via our Zoom and like I did with Tasha Ann Powell. And she is going to teach me how to make longevity noodles on Friday. Well, she just completed a cookbook. Cookbook is called Katie Chin's Global Family Cookbook. And I really think it takes in probably the ethnic cooking from around the globe, as well as you know some of her own Chinese heritage cooking. And we are going to be giving away one of those books on Friday, one of her cookbooks, I will, mine will arrive tomorrow, so I'll be able to show you a little bit tomorrow what it exactly looks like and what's exactly in it. But in the meanwhile, we'll be getting, giving it away, having it sent directly to you. So this is how you win. Right now, share Nanny Bubby's live. And, if you're, and you'll get two entries to win if you share live, which as you know, I get those notifications. And if you're watching us taped after we posted this, then share it anyway, and you will get one entry to win. And last time we did this, we had 118 entries over the five-day period. And uh, uh, Judy got that tropical fruit basket. And um, so enter for your chance to win. So start sharing on your own page right now. You don't necessarily, don't, don't share and gather, because I share that normally. Anyway, but just, Stream me live right now and share off your own home page and you will enter to win twice if it's during the live or one time if you're watching as we record and post. Okay, let's move on to the fennel puree. Hey Sue, how are you? Thanks for being here. Sue Rainish is here. I always love to have her here. She found us in the early days of when we first started doing this show. So I have warm heart throbs for you, Sue, as I do for Teresa and as I do for Frank and everybody else. Judy, Roseanne, everybody else. Susan Mendorf as well. So here we go. I started simmering uh, this, these, this fennel. This is two bulbs of fennel. Let me just turn it a little more. There we go. Two bulbs of fennel and highly salted, like about a handful of kosher salt. I started before you got here because I wanted to make sure that we just weren't twiddling our thumbs for 10 minutes while it came to a softness that we could throw into the um, uh, uh, food processor. So it's completely done. And what I'm going to do right now is just drain it. Can you see that? I can see that with you. Let me turn you even 
one a little more. There you go. How's that? There we go. So we're going to go ahead. There we go. We'll give it a minute. Let me scrape out everything that is on here because we don't want to miss a minute of this beautiful fennel. This was two full bulb bulbs of fennel. There we go. One small little stem left. Okay, we'll take this a little bit back to the stove here, and I'm going to take this burner, if you will, and I'm going to move it out of my way because I need the room for the food processor. So I know you can still hear me because I have my AirPods in, but I'm moving the burner off to the side here, making sure it's unplugged, and then I will go ahead and just move the food processor into view. How's that? Okay. Let me pull it over. There we go. Can you see that? Okay. Set back up. Frank says the final uh, stock would have made a nice soup. Maybe, but there was a lot of water and not as much fennel, actually. So I think if I had used less water, that might have been true, but I guess I could have added, well, I like that, Frank, actually. I could have added carrots to it. I could have added a lot of different things to it, but it was a good start, and it would have been very, very sweet, right? Yeah, hey, Laura Brown, nice to see you. Oh, boy, everybody's here. So in just a few minutes, I'll announce how to win that fabulous Global Family Cookbook written by author and chef, Chef Katie Chin. We're gonna do a great interview with her on Friday. Um, and find out all about Lunar New Year, find out all about how she got into cooking and being a chef. And I'm really looking forward to meeting her on Friday. I spoke to her yesterday and we just like bonded as though we'd known each other our whole lives. I just love that when it happens. So we're making fennel puree right now. And we're gonna start with this two bulbs of fennel have been um, uh, boiled, if you will, simmered, if you will, for about 10 minutes so that all the fennel was nice and soft, which it is. I'm going to take about a teaspoon of, hey Susan, I'm going to take a, a teaspoon of kosher salt and just sprinkle that in. There we go. Maybe that was a little more than, um, but I just really think this puree actually needs a little bit more salt than normal just because it can be very, very flat as you puree, and you don't want it to taste like baby food, right? That's the problem everybody has with purees is that they feel like sometimes they taste like baby food. So we're gonna avoid that. That This is about a tablespoon and a half. We're gonna do about two and a half tablespoons. There we go. A little bit more. There we go. And um, throw that in, and there is something I'm missing see what it is. Um, the Greek yogurt, kosher salt, oh, extra virgin olive oil. Okay, here we go. Extra virgin olive oil. And this is calling for about um, three tablespoons. So I am really just gonna, I'm gonna wing this because sometimes when you add a liquid like this, if you add it all at the beginning and you add it too much and it's too soft, hey, Lindsay, Wow, nice to see you. Lindsay just got here from Paris. So welcome back to the good old USA. Um, and I miss you too, Lindsay. Okay, so we're gonna puree this. Just this. Whoop, whoop, what just happened? So this is, I can tell you, I, let me, it's kind of lumpy and clumpy. So let me just pull this in like this and add just a little bit of the olive oil as the recipe calls for. That ought to smooth it out. Here we go.
It's got a nice tint of green to it. As you can see, there's a little bit of that. Um, I'm going to just push this around just a little bit. Here we go. And you can see that that has really come out really, really nice. So I'm going to take it, take it right off here, let it cool down just a minute. We'll put it in the bowl. But the next thing, oh, I took the burner away. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move the burner back. <laughs> Paris, lucky you. Yes, indeed. Lucky you. All right, let's move that burner back now. I know you can hear me, but what we're going to do is we're going to make the fried cake. So my kitchen and the view, I am truly looking into a camera that has a wide angle view so that I can set up the entire kitchen and not have to worry about, you know, being cramped in a tiny iPhone, narrow little space. So, and I'm making progress. I'm very excited about that. Okay, so here we are. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make fried capers. So let's turn this on. Can you see that? So any of you who want to um, enter our contest, all you have to do right now is share Nanny Bubby Live right now on your own home page, and that will give you two entries to win. And we will call out the lucky winner of Chef Katie Chin's Global Family Cookbook on Friday. She's gonna be my interview guest on Friday, and I'm so happy to have her. Thank you, Frank. Let's see who else is here who has done it. There you go. Um, Papa Nanny Bubby is watching. Hey, Tom, share this cooking live on your on your uh, Facebook page, and um, and you will enter to win Chef Katie Chin's Global Family Cookbook. But if you win, you can't get it because we will have already have one. But do please. I mean, you of all people should be sharing this every day on your on your page, right? Okay, we've turned this on. We're gonna add just a little bit of olive oil just to cover the whole pan, right? We want it completely covered. And when you heat olive oil, what you're really looking for is for it to glisten. So once it starts to glisten, some people will sprinkle it with just a little bit of water just to make sure and see if it crackles or not. But I really like the process of watching it begin to glisten. So I'm gonna turn this up. And what I've done is I've taken a nice little 2.5 ounce jar of capers. I've drained them, I've rinsed them to get the brine off. Some people actually feel capers are too salty with the brine. I actually like the brine and I could eat capers right out of the jar. Um, but for this process, we don't wanna make our fish or our fennel puree too um, salty. So I'm gonna go ahead and the salt actually that I'm doing, and we're gonna see if that's starting to little drop of the wet from the water from, uh, there we go. So it's starting to glisten, not quite all over. I think this burner kind of heats unevenly, so I kind of always move, yeah, there it goes. Starting to glisten and starting to crackle from the wet. So there we go, let's put all these capers in. Who likes capers? Give me a thumbs up if you like capers. I love capers. I love them on locks. I love them on all kinds of fabulous stuff. Okay. Let's this. Okay, back. All right. Turn this down. So we're going to let these just get into one layer and just start to get crispy. And they will do that, they'll pop as they saute, which is nice. And that's how you know they start splitting and getting thickened. And so can you guys see that? Love paper. Susan Mendorf loves them. Okay. Love that. Frank loves it. Okay. These are starting to spatter on me. So I'm gonna move over here and let's make a salad. So this salad is a really, oh my gosh. These are really spattering, so hold on just a minute. I have to get, hey Matt Shaker, nice to see you. Hold on for just a minute, everybody. What I need is a splatter-proof top to lay over the top of this, so hold on one second. Don't know if you've ever seen this, but let me pull this out. Okay, so this is a splatter 
waterproof top. And if I open it like that, I've got a handle. And that way, if you see this, I can just lay this right on top of here like that, turn the fire up, and not worry about it splattering and burning my arm, which it just was doing. So now we've taken care of that. Every once in a while, I'll take a look, see if they're getting crispy. And once I know they are, I'll take them off the stove. But for now, I need to protect my body, right, guys? Because that, that was a little hurting just a bit. OK, so all right, here we are. I'm going to pull off these palm, uh, not palm fronds, but these uh, bell fronds right here. I'm going to take off everything that I can, get them right off. And we're going to use these fennel fronds right into um, our salad. And the salad is going to be made up of parsley and the fennel fronds, which makes it so nice and flavorful. I could add a little bit of red lettuce. I could add, a, you know, whatever you've got in the house, romaine, a little bit of that, just to give something to toss. There we go. And then we're going to add the crispy papers to the salad. We're going to sprinkle crispy papers over the fennel um, puree right before I add the fish. And it's just going to be delicious. It's making me hungry right now. But we have yet another fundraiser tonight for one of our many judicial clients. So Tom is not, I'm not going to this one, but Tom and Russell are. And um, tomorrow is our daughter's fundraiser, so I should talk for just a minute about, um, I was going to say Chef Harmony Latija, Judge Harmony Latija. That is my daughter, and her name we knew that she was a judge, and I'm so proud of her. And tomorrow is a fabulous fundraiser for her. So I will be um, doing my show, and then we're going to run off and start setting up a brew so that when the judge walks in, we can all applaud and be so happy and raise a lot of money for her to win her campaign. Kind of a tough, tough, um, tough way to actually have to do this process, which is you know, you have to actually run for election. It's so odd to me that that judges have to run for election. Just, but then again, if they didn't run for election, what you would have, says everybody, is you would have um, a good old boys network of judges that are appointed, uh, that have a, a lifetime of um, being on the bench, and that's not good either because you would have judges who are not accountable. So, aside from appointment, um, I think the running for office is actually kind of a good thing. I wish that it didn't have to happen, because I hate to see my daughter go through and my husband go through a whole campaign. But, anyway, just pontificating. So, as I'm chopping the fennel fronds, right guys? Okay, so there you go. All beautiful. I'm going to throw those in after I'm going to take out of my herb keeper right here. Absolutely beautiful. Let me see how these keepers are doing. Well, they're starting to get crispy. Moving around. I'm just one moving around. They have a little ways to go. They're starting to get there. Just wait. Turn down the fire just a little bit. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do now is take out these parsley from the herb, herb keeper. And how many of you actually know how to kind of trim parsley from the stem? Um, it's, it's really not as difficult as one might make it because you think to yourself, how, do I, how am I going to do that? They're just kind of all held together. And really what you do, uh, which I love, is you just basically hold it at an angle. Let me see where go here where you can see it. Hold it at an angle and just kind of slide the, the leaves off. So if any stems come off, they're the very tender top stems and you really are getting mostly leaves. And if there's any one stem that goes in that's a little bit too thick, you can always just pull it off. You'll see it like this one. You would see that in there. 
Um, but that's really basically all there is to do it. And for me, it works perfectly every single time. So I'll put this back into the herb keeper or garnish or whatever I might need it for in the next cooking. And I will take this parsley. You see one big, thick, see that? That large, thick stem. So I'll take that, just take the leaves off and throw it into the garbage disposal. And then basically, we're just going to chop up this parsley. So it smells so good. Can you guys see that okay? Hi, Louise Evans. Nice to see you. We're making um, fennel puree for a fish dish that we're going to make crispy tonight. Um, fennel puree with Greek yogurt. We're doing a parsley and fennel frond salad with whatever type of salad you might like or have in your house. I prefer sort of a red leaf lettuce in this because it makes it very colorful. And then we are going to put crispy capers right over the top of this. Hi, Joanne. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Now, remember, if you want to win, Chef Katie Chins, my nose always starts to itch. Chef Katie Chins cookbook, the Global Family Cookbook. On Friday, when she's my special guest, yes, sorry, she's teaching me how to make longevity noodles, meaning a longevity, a long life noodle for Lunar New Year, then please join us on Friday. And right now, just share this, um, this live on your own page. And if you do, you get two chances to win. If you're finding this and joining us and finding us um, by, hi there, and watching us on, uh, after it's live, but it's just been posted on Facebook, then by all means, still share it on your own page and you will get one entry to win, okay? So, last time we had 118 entries. It was absolutely awesome. Our guest, Robert Schuler called out three numbers and a lot of people won. So, uh, by all means, it was a great way to do it. They're random numbers um, that I just say, hey, pick a number between one and 18 and they, you know, everybody's got their favorite numbers. And when he called out the number, I looked to see who was on that number. And uh, it was Lene. And there were two others that came from uh, Melissa Foods also. Tasha and Powell was one, surprisingly enough. And so was somebody else. I can't remember her name. Um, I don't remember her name, but she was from the Melissa Foods side. So look at that. Those are beautiful, crispy capers. Just beautiful. Isn't that great? and they're scattered into the palm fronds. All right, so we're gonna take this celery and palm frond salad. We're just gonna squeeze fresh lemon juice on this. We're gonna wait for those um, palm, uh, capers to um, cool down so that they don't wilt everything that is in here. And I will add some fresh red leaf lettuce to this, which will make it really, really delectable. And I will just use just a little bit of fresh lemon juice and a little bit of just olive oil, just enough to just glisten it. We're not going to douse this by any means with any type of dressing because it's so flavorful. You can see our um, fennel puree. So how I'm going to dish this, which I'm not doing now because we're all leaving for one more fundraiser tonight. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to put the fennel puree out on the plate with my spatula. I'm going to sprinkle. I mean, I can actually do that for you right now, so hold on. And I will show you the beautiful pink opa fish that I'm going to be grilling tonight and making it really nice and crispy. So we show that to you as well. Okay, so this is Hawaiian opa. It's really a beautiful fish. It looks like swordfish. It has a pink flesh. And it's kind of a cross between a swordfish. You can see that. Between a swordfish. You see that? Isn't that pretty? It's got the color of salmon. It has the texture of swordfish. 
and um, it's a cross between a swordfish and uh, tuna in flavor and taste. So isn't that pretty? We're going to grill this, make it really crispy on the outside, and then I'm going to place this right in the middle of, I will show you, we're going to take take some of these crispy, I hope this, yep, some of the crispy capers, sprinkle them right here. You see that? Just, and they're perfectly crispy. They're great. Right here. Then I would take the fish and literally pay, place the fish right in the middle, which it's not cooked. And I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway, just so you can see how I would plate it. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the parsley and fennel and I would put that right around the outside. There we go. And then just place the fish right on top. And then just a few papers on top and maybe a dollop of a fennel puree and maybe a fennel frond just on top. And there you go. And by the way, there you go. What do you think of that? Is that worthy of an applause there, gang? Um, and so this is this fish, when I cook it tonight, is going to be really, really, really crispy. So I just want to tell you that last night's dinner, which was the poached salmon, which I put in the refrigerator for it to be cold and a beautiful salad that I made, we got home last night about 8 o'clock at night, and I just pulled, and Tom said to me, he goes, do you want to stay here and have dinner? And I go, no, I don't. Hey, Vincent. I want to go home. You don't realize this because you didn't watch yesterday, but I made, or you didn't watch this afternoon, but I made a poached salmon. It's in the refrigerator waiting. We came home, threw on our jammies, sat around the table, ate the poached salmon with a great salad. It didn't fill us up. It didn't make us feel too heavy. It just was the perfect thing to, to eat after a really long night on our feet, which is what it was when you do these fundraisers. You got to check people in, get them through the door, take their money, say hello to everybody you know. The next next thing you know, you're literally standing in high heels and Tom in dress shoes um, for like three and a half hours. We got there at 4:30 and we didn't leave until 7:30, so three hours. So when you get home and when you're hungry, you just want to put on your jammies. You want to sit at the table, and the poached salmon was just the perfect, perfect thing. So I'm not going to, to the fundraiser tonight, but the good news is I'm going to be able to get this all prepared and grilled beautifully. I think I might use the outdoor grill uh, to do it on, and when they walk through the door, they're going to have a perfect meal. So that is gorgeous, isn't it? That's it for today, everybody. I love you so much. On the count of three, remember, share this right now, last minute, on your own page. You'll get two chances to win Chef Katie Chin's Global Family Cookbook, and um, and we'll pick the numbers on uh, Friday, and hopefully you win. That's it, everybody. Love you. On the count of three, one, two, three. Go out and spread love like butter. That's it, everybody. Say it with me. Bye. See you tomorrow.